Okay. Well, this mural obviously is showing the Indians before we showed up. Screwed everything up for them. Okay. Paleo and our archaic archaic Indian. Never heard of them. Paleo and archaic Indian evidence of Oh, okay. I think they're talking about paleotography and archaeology. Okay. Evidence of Native Americans on the lower Ohio Valley included the Palo, Paleo Indians who lived in this area at the end of the last ice age about 13,000 years ago, often called big game hunters. Indi oh, okay. Indians of the archaic tradition around 3,000 years ago were the first in the area to begin domesticating plants. Huh. Okay. Never heard of either one of those. Kincaid Mounds. Okay. Woodland and Mississippian Indians. Woodland tradition Indians around 2,000 years ago developed exotic mortuary cults, burial mounds, and effigy eight earthworks and traded Great distances for obsidian, copper, mica, and conch shells. They explored and exploited the caves of South Central Kentucky, where they mined gypsum and a bunch of other minerals. The Chickasaw tribe claimed all of Kentucky and Tennessee west of the Tennessee River until a treaty in 1819. Thereafter, on November 11, 1803, traders, trappers, and Chickasaw natives took little notice of Lewis and Clark expedition, Corps of Discovery, as it trekked through these waters en route to the Pacific Open Ocean. Yeah, Lewis and Clark came down the Ohio get to the Mississippi River because their stuff was, I think, built in Pittsburgh. Let's see. First county seat, Braxton Small, established 1827. Wilmington served as the first county seat during the flood of 1832. So, let's see. Some, uh, Braxton Small serving as the first county court clerk for McCracken County. Removed all the records to Paducah from the original courthouse in Wilmington. Iced solid, clear Illinois. Still recovering from the flood that was the worst disaster experienced in the United States up to that time. The new year, 1938, started with what many feared was a prelude to another debacle. At uh, Paducah, the Ohio River froze solid. Riverfront quickly took on a look of a playground. Marine ways, let's see. Paducah's first heavy industry was marine ways to build and repair river craft. The 1913 Paducah homecoming. In May 1913, Paducah held a homecoming celebration to excite and entertain the public and set the negative image of the city given to the nation by media reports of flood last year. The first event had Mayor Thomas Haslip, Opigant, Legendary Chief Paducah, portrayed by James Wheeler, giving the chief the key to the city. Wheeler arrived on a steamer at the foot of Broadway and rode his horse through the city. Accompanied by a bunch of people acting as Indian princesses, the Booster Club organized multiple events to enhance the week's festivities. Each day had a theme for parade, and Broadway became a street of fair and carnival. A flying boat added to the festival spectacle. Faith Langstaff won Floral Queen contest. Universal Weekly filmed the event, made them available nation nationwide in movie theaters. Among the 
and notable attendance was a group visiting for the dedication of the Paducah Metropolis Railroad Bridge. Yeah, this one goes on for about three panels. Visitors coming to Duke by boat in the early part of the 20th century would have been greeted by a hustle and bustle of riverfront lined with hotels and warehouses, boat offices, lumber yards, supply houses, iron foundries, maritime industries, and small businesses, all connected to the river. Shows barges going through a lock. Okay, Lock and Dam 52, completed in 1928, is located at Ohio River, mile marker 938.9. This site, Lock and Dam 53, are the only remaining movable wicket dams on the Ohio. Both will be removed when the Olmstead locks and dam become operational. Area riverbeds are rich with mussels whose shells, when polished, have lustrable suitable for processing to pearl buttons. Oh yeah, I remember. I think I, think I was here before and uh, didn't realize that those pearl buttons came from these mussel shells. Now look at them! Wow, bunch of them. Paducah Marine Supply Services, owned by operated by Hogland Barge Line, was one of the first floating boat stores on the inland waterways. Paducah being located at the confluence of the Ohio and Tennessee rivers and within close proximity of the Cumberland and Mississippi is a hub of river industry, two major shipyards service the port of Paducah. This one talks about the tow boats, and this is honoring the christening of the tow board Eleanor. July 2nd, 1996, the city of Paducah was visited by Marine Royalty. All three of the Delta Queen Steamboat Company boats docked simultaneously at the port of Paducah. Huh, okay. That would have been cool. Okay, this scene depicts a captain, a highly trained and skilled professional, setting his normal six hour navigation watch in a typical pilot house. He's looking over a 15 barge tow with 24,000 tons of cargo. In 1966, Mayor Tom Wilson, a civic-minded Paducah native, was encouraged by then Kentucky Governor Ned Breshett to organize a celebration of the state's bicentennial. Okay, we got more over here. And a train. Well, my legs are still holding up here, so... We'll keep going. Yeah, and 
October 18, 1850, the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission approved the site of the former Kentucky Ordnance Works as a location for a new facility in the nation's rapidly growing nuclear production complex. Dawn of the Atomic Age. Urgency was the order of the day as construction of the Paducah Gaseous Diffusion Plant, TVA Shawnee Steam Plant, Electrical Energy, Top of Two Steam Plant all began in early 1951, reorganizing the importance of national security. Workers of the region pulled together to meet the nation's needs. Welcome to the Atomic City. Today, Paducah Gaseous Diffusion Plant is the nation's only uranium enrichment facility operated by USEC Incorporated. The plant is a global supplier of enriched uranium for electricity production. The Shawnee Steam Plant on the banks of the Ohio River now provides electricity to customers throughout the region, as does the Joplin Steam Plant. And then the rest of this is railroad history. is talking about this engine here. 1518. This is a uh, 282 Mikado number 1518 baggage mail combination car and terminal caboose. President Paducah's railroad heritage beginning with the first railroad line in 1855 over next 150 years. That 50 mile reach into Tennessee spread northwest, southeast now involves three major railroad systems. The transcontinental connection with the construction of the Ohio River Bridge to Illinois in 1917 and a completion by the Illinois Central Railroad of the massive Paducah locomotive shops on Kentucky Avenue in 1929. Then it just goes on and talks more. I don't think I'm going to go down to the rest of this stuff. Uh, this shows kind of the rail lines and how they get here from Lake Michigan and Chicago. I'll go to New Orleans. Yeah, more murals down that way. Okay. Something interesting here. Center for Maritime Education, Siemens Church Institute. This kind of has a look of a ship's captain's cabin. I'm not sure if it's a church or a college. I'm going to walk back to my car now. Pretty good walk this morning. <laughs> 